Hello, everybody. We are here with your Yamoja guide. We'll be playing Yamoja as a support. Every once in a while, you'll see her pop up in like a solo lane capacity or kind of troll in a mid lane capacity. Uh, but the reason why she's got like a hundred percent uh ban ratio is because of her support so that is where we will be running her today we'll be grabbing a guardian's blessing a ranked up shell four health potions and a hand of the god for our first ability we are going to be grabbing our one this is going to be our main lane clear ability and it has two forms the first form of this ability is what is commonly referred to as bubble this is going to throw down at the first location and then it's going to bounce to that second location it's going to go out it is going to deal damage and it is going to slow enemies by 30 percent before exploding and when it explodes it explodes into a bunch of little bubbles that deal 50 percent damage if you do happen to get hit by both bubbles you do not take the full damage so you can see all double bounce on the bubble and then it goes splody all around. After you use the first form, you get the second form. Um, the second form is a very potentially long range ability that comes down in a stun. You can see how aggressive Yamoja is in the laning phase because she can use her abilities over and over and over again. So the second form of this ability is called Moonstrike. You throw down a giant damaging ability. And if you hit enemies in the center of this ability, they are stunned. I'm gonna throw down a shell to keep my boy alive. He's getting pretty aggressive over here. So they take damage starting from the outside going all the way to the inside, taking that damage. You do more damage as you get to the inner circle and people on the inside will be stunned for one second. The reason why you can spam these abilities over and over and over again is because of Yamoja's passive. Yamoja does not have standard mana like the rest of the gods do instead of mana she has omi omi is this bar that you see below me and instead of her abilities taking mana they take omi instead and so what that means is that her abilities have no cooldowns the only restriction on her actually using abilities is going to be her C, uh, the only restriction is that she actually has Omi. So as long as she have, uh, has enough Omi in order to cast the ability, then she can spam it over and over and over and over again. Oh, we did get the first blood right there. He's gonna die, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue to back it up. So our first ability um, costs two Omi. Our second ability costs three. Our third ability costs three, and our ultimate does not cost Omi at all so right now you can see i've got one two three four five six seven omi so i can spam my first ability three times in a row before i even have to start worrying about my omi it will be also regenerating the bar the entire time you start with seven you can have up to ten by the end of the game you gain an additional omi when you reach 300 mana slash mp5 this is combined from items and you reach your ninth and tenth Omi when you reach level six and 14. On top of that, your basic attacks will also heal. So if you auto attack a friendly God, you can actually see that it's gonna put a small heal over time on him. Just an extra part of a passive. You can still get the damage on like a minion or a God by attacking through. So you can get the heal and the damage from the auto attack actually at the same time. You can also read the password here to see you gain one Omi regen every five seconds. Also, cooldown reduction 
will increase the Omni regen. So because your abilities don't actually have cooldowns, what it's going to do instead is it's going to increase the regen. We got to be a little bit careful here. Going to get a double stun off. I'm going to throw down my ulti now onto Sylvanas because I can, for the most part, get him stuck inside of this. Going to throw down a bunch of abilities. And that's a good old-fashioned Yamoja ulti. Um, finally, you cannot basic attack heal um, minions or anything. That is only going to affect uh, friendly gods. And it does not proc any on-item effects. Now back into our abilities, now that we know what Omi is. Our ability that we grabbed at level 2 was our rip this is pretty aggressive was our riptide if i could hit an ability he would actually be in trouble right now <laughs> i gotta stick around right here and try to heal up my boy i got my shell at the ready if i need it but i really just want to back up oh my goodness nice night so we got our third oh my gosh sorry buddy i backed up right as all that was happening i hope you live our third ability is Riptide. This is going to have also two effects that it can basically do on it, depending on how far you throw it out. So you can see there's a first portion of this bar, and at the very end, there is a second portion where it switches. When you throw down this ability in the blue portion, it is going to launch you forward. Allies can go through this as well as yourself. You are going to fly through the air. You will gain movement speed as well as physical and magical um, protections. So, boop, you can see me go through, you gain the protections and the movement speed. Also, uh, this ring will last for six seconds. And enemies can also go through this. So enemies that go through this will be slowed. They still get that giant jump out of it, but they get slowed instead of the movement speed bombs. If you throw it out all the way, instead, this will go the other direction. So instead of launching forward, it will actually launch them towards me and potentially bring them out of position. So if you land that right on top of somebody, you can force them to kind of jump towards you and your team, bringing them out of position. Kind of like a mini Sobek pluck while also body blocking the way out for six seconds. At level four, we grabbed our two. This is the ability that we are going to be using the most at the end of the game. This is a healing ability. So much like the way that our auto attacks heal, our two is also a heal. It is going to, uh, if it goes through enemies, deal damage to them. It deals um, bonus damage to shields. So if they have a uh, Nike ultimate or something, your two will actually do two times to three times damage depending on your rank in this ability against things like nike shields against a shell whatever and if it hits a friendly target it is going to heal them and provide them a shield and then it is going to bounce to nearby targets that shield lasts for three seconds so theoretically you could use this ability towards an enemy and it's kind of like your auto attack so you can throw it out most of the time you're not going to use this for damage at all you're just going to be using your one for damage but you can theoretically use this against comps that have big shields they do have a nike on their team so situationally that might be a good play most of the time though you're just going to spam More this because it's going to heal up your team yes. and because it gives out shields it means that this ability cannot be entirely countered by anti-heal I'm going to throw down my ulti so that the Sylvanas is stuck. I threw down a million ones, and we're going to be able to get a bunch of kills right here. Throw down some auto attacks on my team. So right there, you saw I started spamming my one over and over again for the stun and the CC. And then I used my ultimate. Our ultimate is like an Odin cage. This is going to bring up two giant walls on your Moja's left and right side expanding quite a bit in front of you those walls are going to body block enemies inside they cannot get out of this your friendlies are not stuck inside of this ultimate they may leave it is going to give you a bunch of omi regeneration so that way you can spam your abilities a whole lot while your ultimate is up 
So basically, you're going to end up body blocking off the enemy team with this ability and then spamming your one or your two. One for damage, two for healing. So I trapped them all in on that. I was spamming them with the slows and the stuns for my one. And then eventually the walls come down. I don't know if it says exactly. Is it four seconds? I don't actually think it says. Uh, eventually the walls come down after a decent amount of time. And they will do a solid amount of damage for a guardian. Plus they will slow everybody. Wow, my snipe again. Plus they will slow everybody that gets hit by it. Um, as well as slightly hit them with the tremble effect. So the effect that you get from a Kabrak in three, you also get that when you hit the Yamoja ulti. Sorry, Vulcan, baby. So with Yamoja, she is one of the most aggressive supports in the game. That is because she can spam her one so many times that it gives her immense lane clear. The reason why she is considered so busted is because she has no weak portions in her game. She is extremely strong in the early game uh, because of because of her clear. And then she scales extremely well into the late game because of her utility and her healing. So she doesn't have any parts of the game where she is weak at all. Only strong throughout the entire game. This is why she is banned all the time. For our level order, we rank up our one to max first. That's because this is our main lane clear ability, our main source of damage in the early stages. We grab our ultimate whenever we can. The reason why we grab our ultimate is because this is going to increase the amount of damage that this ability outputs, which is genuinely a lot of damage considering how much utility you output. Gonna use my ultimate right here to kind of trap Vulcan in this. If he wants to run away, he's basically now gonna have to run back towards us. And it looks like he is going to die for that. Throw down a shell and a two on my Awilix will keep her alive. So I give her the immediate shield from shell. Then I throw down a two which is a small heal on him, but also is going to add to that shield. Make sure he doesn't die from any of that bleed damage that Sylvanas put on him. After we finish maxing out our uh, one and four, then we rank up our two. This is going to increase the damage and the heal that you can get from this. There is an argument to be made for leveling up the one and the two to max and then doing your ultimate. That is totally fine to each their own. Uh, so you may do four, one, two, three, or, uh, excuse me, one, four, two, three, or one, two, four, three, whatever is in your wheelhouse. The reason why I do not rank up, um, the two quite as quick is because I start to transition over with the two as we get more and more into the team fights. This will become your standard ability. But in the earlier stages of the game, the one damage in CC that I provide is typically more useful. So for the first 15 or so minutes of the game, my goal is to basically spam my one, stun people, set people up for ganks and for kills. As we transition into the later game team fight, I start to use my two a lot more because it becomes a lot less about my setup and a lot more about simply keeping my entire team alive with my auto attack heals with my two and making sure that nobody can get killed. The shell effect that she provides on her two, the shield, 130 of this is stacking. You can press your two three times in a row if you have max Omi, not including if you have your ultimate proccing for the bonus Omi regen. It is not absurd at all for you to use your ultimate or excuse me, for you to use your two, four, maybe five times in a team fight. So that is going to be 130 heal times five per target, and then a 130 shield times five per target. And this can hit everybody on your team if you are all grouped up. It is a ridiculously strong ability, just absolutely disgusting. Enemy ultimate down. For our build, we have started off with the standard support build. We grabbed our CDR boot. That's because one, it is going to give us a little bit of mana here, which we need 300 mana slash HP five. 
in order to give us our bonus Omi slot. Then I went into a Thieves just because Thieves is such a good support item. You always have to have it. I'm going to go into a Relic Dagger as my third item. Going to allow me to have my shell up more often. It is also going to give me a little bit of CDR. Keep in mind that CDR, while not used in the traditional sense, on Yamoja is still used because you gain the increased Omni Regeneration. Increased Omni Regeneration basically just means more of you spamming your two. I'm gonna use my three to try to get in closer to this fight. I know that the Vulcan is all the way over here, so I'm just gonna use it to travel all the way over to him and make sure that I'm here to help out my team. So right there, you can see the main use of her three is a movement ability. You can use it aggressively and try to stop people from getting away. And that is a pretty high level use of this ability. But for the most part, you are using this as a rotational ability to try to get from lane to lane. To try to get your team over to a gold fury, over to a fire giant, whatever. You're using it to rotate quickly. If you're in the middle of a team fight, you can try to zone people from getting away. Like if somebody's trying to get out and you see that you're gonna be able to body block them off, you can make some pretty high plays by launching them towards your team. But like right now, I see two people over my Zonkui. He seems to be doing pretty well, but I still wanna get over to him pretty quick. I'm gonna use two of these to head on over. Now I'm here with the Nike. I'm gonna use my ultimate. So he has only one way to run, which was into my Wheelix. Bada bing, bada boom. He gets completely zoned out. And now we can start the big fire. I don't mind tanking this big fire. I'm just gonna use my two. Get a bunch of sustain on us. Keep in mind if you use this ability and you do not hit anyone, you won't get any effect. So you do have to actually aim this ability. But if you watch it go from person to person, I'm gonna use it like on a Wheelix. It'll bounce all the way around to everybody on the team and give everybody that heal and that shield. So now we're gonna get ourselves a Relic Dagger. I'm looking at this team cup. I see that they have a lot of healing. Instead of getting a traditional sprint, I'm actually going to get a Cursed Onk. That Sylvanas heal, if it goes onto them, uh, we're going to get uh, reduced healing. Plus, they're going to have increased damage that they're going to take. And they have a Nike, which means I get the bonus 50% shield minus. So if I see the Nike ult, I can also hit her with a Cursed Onk in order to reduce some of her total shield. Now, at this point, you want to make sure that we're going to get that bonus Omi, Omni slot. Omi? Omni? Omi slot. So we want to make sure that we get just a little bit more mana into this build. Uh, very often, you're going to see people pick up a Breastplate of Valor. Breastplate of Valor is going to give you 20% CDR. This composition is a three physical composition to magical with one of those being a guardian. So I need physical defense. This is going to give me max Omi regeneration. And it is going to give me enough mana to grab that second slot. So now I've got nine Omi and I'll get that 10th one at level 14. They can't touch you. Now, as we've transitioned here towards the end of the game, we've got a pretty big lead, which is to be expected, honestly, on a Emoja. Instead of using a lot of my one, I am going to mostly be using my two. So I'm going to use my one right here in my bubble form, not to clear that wave, but to make sure I am now on Moonstrike. So now if I use my one again, it is going to be in that stun so I can try to use it for setup. So I'm going to try to use it there on the Jingwei and Neza. Not quite going to get anything. I'm going to slam down my two a couple of times to give a bunch of healing and shielding out for my boys. Going to keep using it to sustain everybody up. I've still got my ultimate up if I need it for the Omi regen. But right now we're just going to chill. Be careful. We should go back and just attack middle lane and get the T2. No reason for us to go too crazy right here. Regrettable. On Yamoja, in terms of matchups, there's really no bad matchups. Um, for Yamoja, the worst thing you can imagine is a lot of anti-heal. But the thing about a lot of anti-heal is it doesn't actually counter Yamoja in its entirety because she provides so many shields. And anti-healing doesn't stop shielding. So even though a god like a Sobek might seem pretty intimidating, or even a Sir Cat in the jungle, something like that, 
it's really not that big of a deal because you're still going to get so much utilization out of this ability Attack right main. so she does not have any bad matchups she is good with absolutely everybody and against absolutely everybody she body plucks people off with her ulti so she's great against people like vulcan who don't have a leap she's got a bunch of sustain so she's great against damage over time comps she's got a bunch of cc so she does great and the people that don't have a bunch of movement capabilities and she's great at diving and she's great at everything she has literally absolutely no weakness so you never need to be worried about picking her on Yamoja, there really is no crazy um skill combination like a lot of gods have like you know we talk about use the first ability then the second ability and then you follow up with the ulti Yamoja is not like that at all Hers is a lot more about the time of the game. Up until about the 15 minute marker, it's literally spam your one out of your brains and use your ulti for the body blocking in the Omi region. Once you get into the team fight stage of the game, instead of one spamming, you're basically just two spamming out of your brains to give the heals and the shields for your team, using your ultimate to body block and give you Omi region, using your three periodically in order to get your team to chase down an opponent to quickly run over to an objective like a fire giant or extra spicily to block somebody off from running away by using it on that extra far distance as we would have continued to get into this game we would have finished off that breastplate of valor after that i would have gotten myself into a pestilence to make sure we had a aura anti-heal for the team they had the sylvanas healing they had the yeah. nezha sustain jingwei had a devo gloves so we were going to want to make sure that we had some anti-heal even though i did have the curse dunk if i use a curse dunk and i've got the pestilence proccing on them that's 75 percent yeah. anti-heal without any other things like our brawlers mm. proccing on them which is absolutely fantastic then as we get even later into the game we can start looking at some more specific items for our match so this is where you start to get into the things like uh a mantle of discord if you feel like you yourself are dying too much like when we sell our cooldown boots to make sure we maintain the cdr this is when we start to get things like sovereignty our heart word if they have too much physical damage too much magical damage the jingwei was building crit maybe we end up with a spectral armor to reduce her critical damage just depending on exactly where the game would have gone as we get into the later game uh builds guys and that is our yamoja guide mm -hmm.